Hello. This uh, lesson discusses uh, physics in pictures. This is just a picture gallery of some of the large um, instruments that are used to make progress in, these, in this fundamental field. The pictures themselves come from a competition held uh, and with the results uh, recorded on the web. And it happened over uh, more than one year. This first picture is of a so-called wire chamber, which is recording the uh, tracks of particles. And we can uh, look at the description, which is um, given by this 2010 global competition. And it comes from DESI, which is an accelerator, uh, which we will uh, actually has se it has several accelerators, but uh, uh, DESI is a, a laboratory and um, this, this is the type of, uh, if you look at a, a physics experiment, it consists of many such devices because these tiny particles collide in the center of the apparatus, and then they produce other particles that, scatter, that stream out and have to be detected. They're typically detected, say, in this wire chamber by the electrical charges deposited as the charged particles. Um, go through um, this particular device. This device will not detect neutral particles, just charged particles. Other devices, uh, um, so-called calorimeters, detect neutral particles. This is a very pretty picture, and in fact, uh, the commentary says uh, it's sort of humorous. The sort of grinning uh, magnets, uh, these are the electro electromagnetic coils of a quadru so called quadrupole magnets, which are the heart of an accelerator. They bend the particles. Particles go round and round in circles. Uh, you saw pictures of that with the CERN accelerator. And uh, here's two uh, quadrupoles being joined together. The particles go in this pipe in the middle, and the uh, electromagnetic uh, um, forces are created in these coils. And um, as, uh, there's this, um, it's the same competition as the previous um, picture. It didn't win quite as big a prize, but uh, it's pretty, I would say this is a pretty amusing picture. And it is an example of the, uh, of um, what it takes to do an experiment. Enormous amounts of work are necessary. Physics graduates spend, graduate students spend years doing, building this type of thing. Here is a more classical picture, so called control room. You have control rooms from lots of things, from uh, various military things, NASA, NASA spacecraft, uh, and, and um, I don't know, um, electrical grids and things like that. And it is, of course, what is controlling the operation of the uh, accelerator. The, uh, the physicists are sitting in so called experimental halls where particles are diverted or, or coming from the accelerator, um, do their thing, they collide. And the, the physicists in the halls look at the results. But uh, there is, back in uh, this control room, there are the key people who keep those particles running around in circles. Well, actually, not the particles that collide, the particles that collide disappear. But most of the particles don't collide, and they keep running around in circles. And every now and then, many times a second, they collide, either with themselves, if that's when you have colliding rings, or with a uh, um, fixed target. Here is a picture of uh, the, um, uh, yeah, this, is, this is a picture of the, uh, Ring at HERA. HERA is an electron um, proton accelerator, and it actually is uh, slightly unusual. Most uh, most of these rings are either collide protons with antiprotons or electrons with uh, positrons, and uh, this one actually uh, collides electrons with protons, so-called EP collisions. Um, and they do that with having a common tunnel. That tunnel uh, accelerates electrons and accelerates protons. Protons are harder to bend, 
So you need uh, higher performance magnets. So the uh, magnets used for the protons are superconducting. The magnets used for the electrons, which are not accelerated towards high in energy, are um, conventional. Um, so the, here a tunnel is pretty long, 6.3 kilometers. And like uh, the sum one we saw, it has um, multiple experimental halls, which are pretty big. And um, as is, this explains here, this uh, key idea that you must have, because of protons and electrons have different mass, you need to uh, treat them in different ways. Uh, I should point out electrons are very hard to run around in circles because um, you can't really do very, you have to be very careful because uh, they radiate light. In fact, they, that concept is used to produce light sources. And when they radiate light, they lose energy. Protons do not do that. It only, this only happens for light particles like electrons. Here is a picture of the so called um, relativistic heavy ion collider. That's at the Brookhaven lab, which is in Long Island, uh, north of New York. And uh, this has uh, looking at uh, even, all of these actually are doing different physics. This is the physics of large, large fat nuclei. Uh, colliding with targets, and that is uh, that can produce interesting effects because there's the nuclei are themselves made up of lots of protons and neutrons, and if you really bang them at high high um, um, momentum or velocity into a target, those uh, you get some sort of um, relativistic plasma of um, of ions, which put, puts them into a different state where all sorts of interesting things can happen. So this is um, REAC, uh, REAC is the, again, a big accelerator. It's not quite as big as before, only 2.4 miles uh, in circumference, but it's still a major undertaking. And this again shows you these typical tunnels with, um, with the um, rings which hold the magnets, which then guide the particles around these circles. And these are particles, of course, go around and around many times gaining a little bit of energy each time they go around the circle. Here's a, actually a totally different type of um, not big science apparatus. This is an um, apparatus living inside a mountain. And um, it's the so-called Gran Sasso National Laboratory in an Italian uh, facility. And why would you put the apparatus in places like that? Uh, you also put them at the North and South Pole. Or, um, for similar reasons, and there's a big experiment called Ice Cube that does that. And you do that because if you uh, can, there are certain experiments involving, in this case, usually particles like neutrinos. And if you take a neutrino, it's very weakly interacting. So if you stick a mountain in front of a neutrino, nothing much happens. However, if you put a mountain in front of a neutron or a cosmic ray and things like that, junk that lives in the atmosphere, that mountain will uh, stop the, um, those neutrons and cosmic rays. So if you put a experimental apparatus deep underground, uh, you get a very clean environment without much background. You have to choose the um, place you put it so there is very little radioactive contam contamination if you the rocks of your mountain have lots of radioactivity, you will actually, it itself will generate its own background. So this is carefully designed not to do that. That's explained in this overlay here. Um, it's, again, this is a huge facility, 900 scientists, 29 countries, 15 experiments. And is that not surprising if it's the Grand Sasso um, um, Laboratory, it's on the Grand Sasso Mountain. And um, this explains here that uh, this rock that lives over the experiment, which gives her a huge reduction of a factor of a million in the background. And that's pretty important because neutrinos, or which is a typical thing we're trying to study, um, have very low interactions. And so any background is very serious because the background typically is a much uh, more um, Aggressively interacting particles, protons and neutrons have lots of interactions. Cosmic rays, which are essentially those particles, have those types of interactions. And so you're just going to be dominated, even by a small amount of background material. 
And as we search for the source of dark energy and and the curious properties of the of astrophysics, this type of experiment is on the interface between particle physics and astrophysics. And as it says here, you're looking at the results of supernova explosions, uh, neutrinos produced in the sun, and things like that. And it's a very, very important type of science. And as I say, it's all done inside this um, uh, tunnel, which is uh, actually holds a freeway, but they've just burrowed out some uh, physics laboratories by the side of the freeway. And that's just a small sketch of some of the major apparatus that is required to do big science. And one of the reasons I actually left this field was just a huge number of people. When I did the particle physics experiments, we only had 30 people on the experiment. And that was, I found, quite a lot. As we noted today, they have 3,000 people on some experiments. So this is the features, which has pluses and minuses of big science. So that's the end of this picture gallery. We'll get on to some more technology in the later, in the next um, unit. Thank you very much.